Hello everyone, I have here the Anycubic Castle that I received from Gearbest. In this video I will go over a complete review on the Anycubic Castle. I have printed 60 hours worth of prints completely stock. And then I did a minor upgrade and was able to print TPU. This Delta printer has a build volume of 180 by 180 by 320 millimeters. This printer does not come with a heated bed, so keep that in mind. You will be restricted on some of the filament that you'll be able to use. Let's go ahead and get started by talking about the build process. When you receive your Anycubic Costal, it will be a complete kit and you will have to put every part together. After everything is unpacked, it should look like this. After receiving mine, I found that there was no defects, no broken parts, and everything was good. This took me about 7 hours to build. It would have took less if I was not recording. To check out the build video, I have a link down below. What I really like about this, it's a full metal frame and it is very sturdy. As you can see, it doesn't take up too much desktop space, which is a nice thing. I use my Raspberry Pi and it even came with its own filament spool. That works rather well. Next, let's go ahead and talk about bed leveling. There are three screws on the top that you will use for bed leveling. Now there is already a really good video out there on how to level this printer, so I will leave a link down below. What I found really nice was once I had the level down, which took about 45 minutes, I haven't had to level it since. Whereas my CR10, I was leveling after every print. One thing that I did not like, it is kind of a noisy printer. With fan upgrades and stepper dampers, it should lower the noise level. Next, let's go ahead and talk about print quality. This printer comes with a one kilogram of black PLA. And at first, I thought this was pretty good PLA. The quality, as you can see, is decent. Everything turned out pretty nice on the very first print. However, I found that this material that it comes with is very brittle and breaks apart very easily. So I decided to grab a different roll of filament and started doing testing with that. So here is my first large print. As you can see, it is very stringy. I didn't have my settings correct for this. As I printed more models out, I honed in my settings, and here is another version of that model. I was able to get rid of the strings, and it turned out a lot better. This model was printed at 0.2 resolution with a two-layer wall. Next, I decided to do a couple print-in-place prints. Both of these models that I pulled off the printer it were able to move very easily and actually worked out really well. This fish, this dead fish, is actually 0% infilled and turned out a lot better than I thought it would. Next, I went ahead and did a 02 millimeter benchy and also a 0.1 millimeter benchy to compare the quality. And by far the 0.1 millimeter benchy turned out very nice. It is hard to see with the camera, but the one on the left is a very good quality. Next, I started doing larger prints. This one is on vase mode and actually turned out very well. I then decided to test the max height, 320 millimeters, which is this model right here. And it turned out also very well. There was issues with the rocket on the tip, but everywhere else turned out very well. I reprinted the jack because the black PLA the printer came with was too brittle, and this one was functioning and turned out nice. I printed a lattice to kind of do a torture test with the retraction settings, and this one turned out okay. It's not the best. Now, this is what amazed me. I was able to print PETG on this printer and I came out with this model first and it was a bit stringy and I had to change my settings up a little bit so then I came out with this and this turned out very nice very strong this had no problem sticking to a cold bed 
Next I decided to print a phone stand. I am just really impressed how well this printer handles PETG. All these models that I show will be available in a link down below. One of my more favorite filament to print with is TPU. I found a model on Thingiverse where I could just replace this part right here and be able to print TPU. So with PETG, I did a time lapse of a print right here. Properly leveled, these prints are hard to get off. Once we have that print off, we're going to go ahead and replace that top piece, just like so. With this minor upgrade, we will now be able to print TPU, and here is a time lapse of a TPU print. Here are two models that I printed with TPU and look at that quality. Now TPU it's hard to get rid of all the strings but it, it's a really fun material to mess with. So here's that rocket that you guys saw being printed and the quality is okay but the tip of the rocket is still pretty bad. This can probably be fixed through the software. Now I was able to print three different materials, PLA, PETG, and TPU without a heated bed. Now that we have seen the quality of the prints, let's go over the overall review. This printer is a kit, you have to put it all together, and for some people that might be a difficult thing. The instructions were actually pretty helpful throughout this whole thing, and there are a couple YouTube videos to include one that I did out there. Also one thing I want to point out this is a Delta printer I have two Cartesian printers and the software would tell me certain times the prints would be done and for a Cartesian printer it usually meant if it was five hours it would get done in like six and a half to seven hours. This printer if it was five hours it gets done in about three and a half hours so it does print quicker than a Cartesian printer. As far as the quality goes, it's okay. It's not great, but it's also not the worst. And I do have to say this, I was actually pretty surprised for a $180 printer to actually do so well and seven hours of your time. As far as bed leveling, it took me a little bit to kind of figure out how it works but once I got it down it took me about 45 minutes to actually get it leveled and once leveled I haven't leveled it since so the question is would I recommend this printer I would say yes I, I would um, but you just gotta keep in mind it is a kit and if you're not comfortable with putting it together a kit then this might not be for you it was easy just time consuming but in the end, it, it was actually kind of worth it, especially on the first print. The first print actually turned out way better than I thought it would. Here in the near future, I will be putting out episodes where I will be doing upgrades and I will show the full upgrade and how to do them. And I will even show if it's even worth doing. So that way I spend the money and you don't have to. But what I do think I like most about this printer was being able to print with PETG. For me, I don't really like to print with ABS because it warps really easy. So to have a $180 printer, being able to print with PETG with no heated bed, that is a nice perk. So there you have it. This will conclude the review on the Anycubic Castle. GearBest has given me a coupon for this and that will drop it down to $169.99 at the time this video is posted. I will try to keep up with the coupons they give me. I will leave a link down below where that will be available to you. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe if you want to see future upgrades and more printer reviews in the future. Thank you guys for watching.